while we're at a fault not following rules that we the society gives. You know what I mean? It's it's a real it's a real they're bad guys for a reason. It's funny and. I like I love what Megan said too. I, I completely forgot about that with the son bit, and it's just the guy forgets that he killed his son. <laughs> and, yeah, and just and it, I do I do say though it hurts when White Bull's crew is killed because I love when they're having snowball fights the co- <laughs> on the, the side of the mountain. The costume designer they said, have a lot of fun together. Yeah, I love that group. I, what I like about what the costume designer said that is Viking. If you look at everybody. Viking's the best dressed of all of them, and he won't allow any of his other henchmen to look as good as him, and they all have to follow a sort of uniform. Whereas White Bull, if you look at his crew, they're all individuals, and they have fur, and they have different outfits or flannels. Or yellow gloves. Yellow right. Oh, that shot is so good. Beautiful shot. Well, those, they, those are those are buckskin gloves. And I just Amazing. love that they are individuals in his gang. And right. just the two of them meeting and... I, you know, both men who lost sons end up living, but both of them are just wildly corrupt by this period of time. It's just right. a, I, I don't know. It, and, and look at, you know, what's crazy too is Coxman shows up to wingman, gets his brother killed to get revenge. So he gets revenge on this guy, but in the process, his brother dies. He loses his wife. I, and I, he doesn't get his son back. He doesn't yeah. gain anything. Mm-mm. Nothing. You know what I kind of like going back to the very beginning beginning of the movie. He's giving his speech because he's in another wonderful irony of this movie is he's Kehoe's citizen, citizen of the citizen year. Of the year. <laughs> <laughs> he sets off all of I mean I guess he does eliminate two rival criminal gangs, but That's going to open up a gang war though. But his quote in his speech, he says, "I picked a good road." And I stayed on it. And that's how he became citizen of the year and had this life. But he abandons all of that when his son dies. And it's just so funny that that's where this starts. Also, I've, I've been alive for 40 years. And uh, I've never heard of anybody ever getting a citizen of the year award. Like, is that a thing? Oh, I've gotten it three times. Well, that makes May sense. They got it but six times. I think Megan's just like, hey, Mark, your award came in the mail. And she's like, tee, hee, hee. And you're like, oh, I got it again. We awarded um, by a million in our house. Megan, you set up a banquet with 200 people three <laughs> times? That's impressive. You went for lobster. Eggs. Oh, no. Yeah. What did you eat? Is that why I saw the second mortgage on our house one time? Probably. <laughs> I have a great wife. Yeah, that's the citizen mortgage. <laughs> that was a great... Yeah, they, I just... Oh, man, everyone sang Sweet Caroline at my thing and... <laughs> Can you imagine the pressure of being named Citizen of the Year? No, because I've had it three times. Right. So <laughs> I don't. I don't, <laughs> I don't have that. I don't. Have, I'm not going to fight, but I don't have that experience. But they say like if you win the lottery, don't tell anybody because then all of a sudden you're going to have more friends in the world to do with. But imagine if like, well, that guy's the Citizen of the Year. Clearly, he can help me move my fridge. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Because oh, we have the Citizen of the Year. Yeah, you're going to well, say no? Well, blew out his back the first and fifth times. Yeah, and then I don't have to do it anymore because people are like, man, Mark hurt himself for the rest of his life being citizen of the year. So now he doesn't have to. So, right. Yeah, I blew out my back being citizen of the year. I think if you I think if you blow out your back being citizen of the year, that qualifies you for citizen of the millennium. Yeah, yeah they're citizen for life. That's why I keep getting that award every year. It's great. That's amazing. Yeah, parades, everything over here. It's beautiful. Now, what do you think about like? Okay, how about this? This is a movie that is is just loaded with little beautiful things. The map of tiny pretty tiny things. Tiny pretty things. Yes. I love it. Is it perfect thing or perfect? Perfect. perfect. Tiny, the map tiny. of tiny perfect things is so good. Ah. Okay. This is what I want you two to do. I want you two to pick your three favorite tiny moments Ooh. in this movie. So, Adam. Uh, who wants to go first? Who who has one off the top of their head? Well, l- ladies first. Mm-hmm. Ladies first. Um, what am I gonna pick? There's I so many, so many good ones. There's so many tiny things. You know something that I love about Liam Neeson's character, and this is a tiny moment, is he is out there killing people, trying to find the root cause of his son's death. And in one scene with Santa, when he kills him, he takes the coke, and it just gets rid of it. He cuts it all open and throws it to the wind, and he gets it in his face, and he's like, ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> but he gets, he has no, uh, whatever. 
no interest in selling it, no interest in giving it back to them. Just he gets rid of the Coke and just dumps it on the snow. Yeah, I love, and they got a lot in his face. He was going to be Cor- <laughs> Corky Romano in it for sure. Oh. Wow. All right, what do you got, uh, Adam? Who's your. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> it's just her exercise outfit when he comes in. <laughs> yes. Like, is it 1987 perpetually in her mind? Like, just that costume detail, I, I was just like, I just burst out laughing when when I walked when he walked in to have, like, a very serious conversation and she was in that get-up, I lost it. I love that character. She makes me so happy. Um, yeah. yeah. She was good. All right, Meg, what's your next little tiny moment? Um, I had a funny quote written down here when they're talking about um viking is a bath and his 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 ex-wife or his not quite ex-wife scares him and she he says he's paid for computers so he doesn't have to go to anti-bullying seminars all this stuff and he says that's the privilege of my business and she says you're not a businessman trevor you're a criminal <laughs> and that's just so yes so cutting <laughs> She gets to him, doesn't she? I like so another piece of that relationship. I, it occurred to me while we were watching it, all their interactions. I think he really still likes her. He just hates that she hates him. <laughs> yeah, there are people that like being liked, right? They need to be liked. And she does and not th- like him. No, he she does not like him at all. And I think that like he just wants to be impressive, whether it's to his mm-hmm. enemies or his henchmen or his ex-wife or his son. He wants to be impressive, and she thinks he's the least impressive person on the planet. (laughs) And she makes it so obvious. And then the scene where she ducks below his punch, she obviously knows his actions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She telegraphed that. Mm -hmm. So that was going to be my second little pretty moment was the the punch duck. Oh, so good. I love a good punch duck. It's so good. Because it just – it takes the, like, oh, I'm I'm a jackass. I'm going to hit my wife. She's going to have a black eye for the rest of the movie like that. Brad Wesley of it all. He just takes all that power away in three seconds. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't even abuse me properly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I love that. All right, Meg, what's your third and final? Oh, man, there's so, just there's just so many good little things. I think I really just love the the gags between the two cops. Yeah, just the looks. I think I predicted it when we were sitting there, and she gets the information from her her ex in whatever town he's in, and she goes, "There's an avalanche." <laughs> <laughs> so good. And just the look of disgust on his face. Oh, he's so disappointed. Uh, Gills. Yeah. So, Gip, he's just so upset by her doing that. Oh, it makes me happy. All right, third and final. Uh, and so we've talked about this before, but. The juxtaposition of, like, he's so concerned about his son's diet. Like, so concerned. Oh, yeah. And the next scene, he's eating Fruity Pebbles with Viking. <laughs> and he's digging through his lunch to yeah. pull out snacks. And the guy's like, I thought it'd be good for him. Yeah, I loved oh. it. I loved that moment. I, I got something fun for you, too. I, I I haven't told Megan. I haven't told you. Since this oh, is secret, our... Secret. Our, I think you said this is our hypothermia trilogy. What did you say? This is our mountain frostbite, top, frostbite. frostbite trilogy, our mountain madness trilogy. I right. want you two to do a violence on the mountain draft. So you each have to draft five movies, three movies, because this might get excessive. Three movies that feature <laughs> mountaintop violence. Oh, jeez. All right. I feel like I was born for this. <laughs> All right. Are you ready for this? Yeah. All right. So you, uh, yeah. You know what? You gave Megan first pick on tiny pretty things, so oh, I'm gonna give you first dang. one on this. I'm gonna go very literal here, Mark. You said it. Mountaintop violence. I'm going Return of the King. Whoa. Whoa. Mount Doom. Mount Doom. You're going Mark Fantasy Football right here. I'm going Mark Fantasy Football because he's got his finger bitten right off. <laughs> I'm just gonna go for the cheap shot and take cliffhanger. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. That's that's rough, right? Like, <laughs> Make it. like, oh, okay, okay, okay. I was, I was thought that was, uh, no, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I'm so, I'm so flustered right now. It's You're short circuiting. <laughs> yeah, this is like, like the time we picked Battleship off of Tom. Oh man, team. 
Tom Tresemer, he's he's a guest on the show, longtime friend, worked on him with many sets. His favorite movie is Battleship. And he and I did a draft, and for some reason, he did not... I gave him first pick, and he took maybe Dark Knight Rises first, and then I went Battleship. And he's like, you can't do that. <laughs> he was so and, flustered for a good ten minutes. And then, But then he went and picked the total Ringer Squad and defeated me 90-10 <laughs> in the poll. But it was worth it, because okay. I got Battleship. Okay. <sighs> um... Does this count in your minds? Because I feel like at the last scene, they're in the mountaintops of Mars on Total Recall. Mm. Isn't that a cavern? Don't they go underground? Yeah, but I thought, weren't they looking out over like the horizon at the end? When they put his, put his hand on that thing and then the atmosphere changed and they're looking out above. You know, the... I'm going to let you say yes or no on this one, Adam. Oh, so I, I I say that they're it's a, it, they're in caverns in a mountain on Mars. Total Recall. Jeez Louise, Megan, you're in trouble. Well, what are you is... talking about? She has a cliffhanger. She can beat me with one movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's that? Um, what's a good another one? How about Vertical Limit? <laughs> there we go. You're spending a lot of time on cliffs here. That's what I. Megan's really going heavy cliff. <laughs> She's really yeah. going mountain heavy. I, 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 I have a clincher though. Uh oh. And see, it's yeah, it's a George Miller movie. It's the Man from Snowy River. The Man from Snowy River. I love it. Mm. Where he needs to prove he's man enough to live in the mountains, because his dad <laughs> dies and the mountain men kick him off the mountains. They go be a man before he can live up here. Oh, I like it. That's a good pick. Even it up a little bit. All right, Megan, you're mm, up. Mountains. <laughs> mountains? What? I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying. Megan just said mountains. I'm ruminating on mountains. <laughs> she just said mountains, I think. Mm. Megan, mountains. Well, so she... part of me, I can't remember if they're in a mountain, and I want to go Liam Neeson in the gray. Is he in a mountain? Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I Whoa. just lost. Whoa. You know, talk about another surprising Liam Neeson movie. It was not at all what we expected, but it was still very interesting. Yeah, I wish it had an ending. <laughs> well, this all right. So, Fellowship, Return of the King, Total Recall. I'm gonna give you the remake, and the Man from Snowy no, River. No, no, don't give me the remake. No, no. <laughs> it's like King Kings a gun with no bullets. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> You know that is you specify. Yeah. Well, you never told me. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> you know what this is? This is when you're seven years old, and your buddy comes over to your house, and you have what <laughs> you have one plastic sword to play with, and you say, "Here, you can use the case as a sword," and you give him the plastic case, the sheath, and he says, "That that's a good enough sword for you." That's what you gave me. I said, "Total Recall." And you said, "Here, you can have the sheath for it." <laughs> Oh. So we have Return of the King, yeah. Total Recall, and The Man from Snowy River versus Cliffhanger, Vertical Limit, and The Gray. Exactly. Now, Megan, I think Cliff Time, Megan, wins this. But Return of the King is very strong, The Man from Snowy River, and Total Recall has a decent amount of cliff work. Even mm -hmm. though I feel like it's underground. But I let you have it because I trust you. And you're an honorable person, and I don't think you would pick anything unhonorable. So I support I you 100% on this. I appreciate that. That's right. Well, this is going to be a close one. I really think this is going to be a good one here. This I'm excited. About it. Uh, well, I just want to say thank you, man, for, for Wait, recommend. Oh, what is everyone's favorite kill in the movie? Since we talk about so much dead. Oh, can I go first? Oh. Yeah, Mark, you go first. Yeah. Thank you, Megan, even though you brought it up. I'm saying Speedo. One thing I like about Speedo's death is that being a bouncer for many years... I've seen a lot of punches land. I love how this turns into what was your favorite kill to Mark being like, well, when I was Dalton in Roadhouse. But, what, but here's the thing. When Liam Neeson punches somebody five times as hard as he can, he does maximum damage on right. the person's face. And that's what happens. I mean, your knuckles are – there's a scene where his knuckles are bloody after pulverizing the guy. And he's tired. In bar yeah. fights, if someone connects really good, there's going to be blood. And then the, everyone around is going to be tired because nobody's in shape in a bar during a bar fight. So I love that he's tired punching this guy. And the punches just feel 
I don't know, watching this movie, it's very heightened, it's very hyper-realistic. But some of the 